Hi guys, Olive here. Today I'm here to do my December 2015 wrap up and my January 2016 TBR. I have about a million books to talk about, so let's just hop right in. The first book that I finished off in December was The Anatomy of Dreams by Chloe Benjamin. Similar to An Uncommon Education by Elizabeth Purser, I did not know what to make of this when I first started reading it. The book starts off at a boarding school in California where Sylvie, our main character, meets a guy named Gabe. They're both teenagers and they're very attracted to one another and they kind of form this relationship. But then Gabe just disappears all of a sudden. The book hops back and forth between their time together at the boarding school and then when they eventually get back together, which is revealed like on the first page. When you're in the sections that are closer to the present day, so when they're back together again, you are focusing in on their studies on lucid dreaming with this really elusive and mysterious professor. There are a lot of questions in this book about the ethics of studying lucid dreaming, the patients that they're studying and they're trying to teach lucid dreaming to have very serious sleep problems. These are people who become violent in their sleep, who sleepwalk and put themselves in danger. So very, very serious sleep problems. They're trying to teach these patients lucid dreaming so that they have more control over themselves as they're sleeping. They follow this professor to the Midwest where he's continuing his studies. And when they move into their new place of where they're staying in the Midwest, they have these two neighbors. And they have a very strange relationship with these neighbors. And then Sylvie starts having these really, really crazy dreams about one of her neighbors. And it kind of blurs the line between dream and reality to the point where you're not sure what's going on at all times. There's this haze over a good section of the book where you're not sure what's real and what's not real. And the whole book has a dreamlike quality to it. I was really tempted to put this book on my top 10 of the year because I can't get it out of my head. I only gave it four stars because it just didn't quite reach up to five stars for me, but I just can't get this book out of my head. It was just so interesting and it did not go in the way I expected it to at all. It really surprised me, which is not something that happens often with books. So I would really recommend this one. Next, I listened to an audiobook for the first time in a long while I was able to finish an audiobook, and that was Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gay. This is a collection of essays by Roxanne Gay, which do talk, of course, about feminism, but also about race um, about pop culture. There's one that talks entirely about Scrabble, which I personally didn't find very interesting. I gave this collection three stars because although I really, really enjoyed Roxanne Gay's voice and I want to read more writing by her, I felt that this collection was so heavily saturated in pop culture. Like she could not make a reference or talk about an issue without bringing up something from pop culture. And I feel like it really... For me, it really diminished the importance of the essays because I feel like when you're talking about some serious subjects, you don't need to be bringing up pop culture so much. But that was just my opinion. The next book I finished was All Stories Are Love Stories by Elizabeth Purser. I requested this copy for review. I ended up giving it four stars. It was probably more like three and a half. I did not enjoy this one as much as I enjoyed An Uncommon Education, but I'm definitely not sorry I read it. This book centers around three different people, Vashti, Max, and Jean. Jean is an earthquake researcher at Stanford University. Vashti is a baker and Max is a music director and also Vashti's long lost love. The book takes place over the course of two or three days around Valentine's Day, where there are two very major earthquakes that happen in San Francisco. Some things are happening up to the point of the earthquake that are pretty important. Vashti is having recurring dreams about Max, the one who got away, and is encouraged by her sister to reach out to him. And then Gene has just received tenure status at Stanford where he's studying earthquakes and a colleague of his is predicting that major earthquakes are on the horizon. The story was pretty good, but honestly what really stands out is Elizabeth Purser's writing. Homegirl can write a sentence like nobody's business and she makes me feel all of these things. She could really write about anything 
and it would just evoke such emotion in me, which is such a powerful thing. What I really liked about my reading month in December is that I had a little bit of overlap between Bad Feminist and All Stories or Love Stories, because Roxanne Gay talks a lot in her essays about never feeling safe. And one of the main issues brought up in this book is we think that we're untouchable now that we have all this technology and humanity has progressed to such a great extent. We feel as though we are no longer vulnerable to natural disasters. But now with the way climate change is happening, all of these weather events and these natural occurrences are so much more severe. We feel as though we are safer than ever before, but actually, are we ever safe? Is it okay that we feel safe? Are we protecting ourselves enough? So it really got me thinking along those lines. I absolutely love when I have crossovers and topics between the books I'm reading. So this was a really great example of that. A few weeks ago, my mom came to visit and we were in Barnes and Noble and I saw this book, To Brew or Not to Brew by Joyce Tremel, which is a ridiculous cozy mystery set in my city. What sold me was this cat in his cast on the cover. And then it talks about beer brewing and has recipes in it and is set in my city. So I just had to pick it up like immediately because I was so morbidly fascinated and it was about as ridiculous as I expected. There's a murder in a brewery. This new brewery is opening in a revitalized section of the city and someone is trying to sabotage the opening and then the co-brewer, the brewing assistant, ends up dead. The woman who runs the brewery is trying to figure out what happened. It is ridiculous and there is a cat with a broken leg named Hops in it. It was crazy, but I gave it three stars. Then during the book Tubathon, which I was hoping to participate in but ended up getting too sick to really participate in fully. I was going to have a Rasputin fest and read first and foremost the Rasputin file and then this graphic novel about Rasputin, which I did get to. This was so cool. This takes place in a world where Rasputin actually did have healing powers and you're finding out where they came from and what he uses them for. And then this is leading up to his murder. I'm really excited to see where it goes next. I don't want to talk too much about it because spoilers, but this is a really great graphic novel. I'm really surprised I haven't heard more people talk about it on booktube. Please, more people read this. This is really cool and the art is awesome. I mean, look how cool. Bar fights. Then my husband and I went to the library to pick up some books for him, actually, and I was in the graphic novel section and I was feeling well enough to read those. So I read Delilah Dirk and the Turkish Lieutenant, which was interesting. I ended up giving it three stars, but it was just lacking something. So I just couldn't give it any more than that. I also read Anya's Ghost, which is a little bit of a ghost story. There's this teenage girl and she's wandering through the woods, falls into a hole and there's a skeleton down there and its ghost is with it. This ghost ends up coming with her to school and helps her out. But then there are some mysteries and it was interesting. Um, the teenage girl herself is an immigrant. So it was really interesting to see that kind of narrative. I don't know much really about the immigrant experience. I am not one. And so it's very encouraging to see that there are graphic novels out there that talk about the immigrant experience. I also read Hark a Vagrant by Kate Beaton, which was so hilariously funny. This is perfect for anyone who likes history and who likes pop culture and likes silly cartoons with really funny facial expressions. There was one in here while my husband was playing video games, I was trying to tell him what it was like so he didn't have to get up and come over and see it. But he ended up having to anyway because I was laughing so hard I could not get the words out of my mouth. So yes, very funny, four stars, really, really liked it. There are a few books that I'm currently working on. I'm still working on The Enchantments by Katherine Harrison, which follows the story of Rasputin's daughter after Rasputin has been murdered. It's really interesting, but again, I just wasn't feeling well enough to read over the past week or so. So I'm going to continue with this and hopefully finish it pretty soon. The audiobook I'm currently working on is A Darker Shade of Magic. I have it in both print and audiobook. I'm a little bit past the place that I was when I put this down earlier in 2015. 
and I am really enjoying it. It's not like I didn't enjoy it the previous time around. It just wasn't hooking me, but I feel pretty hooked now. So I'm definitely going to continue with this. I think I'm about halfway done. I'm also reading through another graphic novel, which is pretty lengthy and it's taking me more time than I thought it was going to called Lena Finkel's Magic Barrel. This is also a graphic novel that follows an immigrant and her experience in the United States. But this follows an older woman who has gotten divorced and she has two children and she's kind of getting back into the dating scene. I am enjoying it so far. I do like to read books that talk about slightly older people because I am closer to that age than I am being a teenager and I'm only moving forward, not moving back. So I do like to read stories about women who are a little bit older. There are things I like about it, but then there are things I'm not so crazy about just with the art and with the writing. My nonfiction pick for this month that I've actually already started in order to be able to finish it in January, since it's the lengthy one, is The 900 Days, which is a history of the siege of Leningrad. I was thinking a lot about my reading of City of Thieves, which I did this time last year. And I really lamented the fact that I had not read that book alongside of this one. I had posted a video a while back when I first started my channel about fiction and nonfiction matchups and how I like to read a fiction book and a nonfiction book that cover the same subject matter in order to get more out of both of them. And so because I did not get to read this alongside of City of Thieves, I am reading it alongside of... Hunger by Elise Blackwell, which is another book set during the Siege of Leningrad. It's tiny, the print is huge, and the margins are huge, so this one's not going to take me very long. I will, of course, be reading the first Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone. This will be for my project, A Grown Woman Finally Reads Harry Potter. So I'm not actually going to be reading this one in print. I have the enhanced ebook off of the iBooks store that I will be reading. I'm not sure if I'm going to read the whole series in that format. I'm going to see if I like this first one and then make choices from there. I will be buddy reading The Librarian by Mikhail Elizadov with Michael from Knowledge Lost. I got this advanced copy of Stork Mountain by Miroslav Pankov from Steve over at Open Letters Monthly. Thank you very much, Steve. I am trying to go into this as blind as possible, but just this cover. Like, can we talk about this cover? It's one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. And I am so excited to get into this one. The audiobook I will be listening to after I am done with A Darker Shade of Magic is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. I have heard this one is perfect for the winter time. So I am really looking forward to that since it is finally getting cold here on the East Coast of the United States. At my library, I have a hold on Mr. Splitfoot by Samantha Hunt. This is a new release, so as soon as it comes in and is ready for me to pick up, I will be picking that up and starting it. And then lastly, if I have time, I am interested in reading The Group by Mary McCarthy. For some reason, it just struck me as a book that would be really interesting to read during the winter time. So if I have some extra time, if I manage to finish all of these books that I want to read in January, then I will be picking that one up as well. Let me know if you've read any of these books down below. If any of them sound interesting to you, I'd love to have a discussion with you in the comments section. You can also find me on both Twitter and Instagram at a book olive. The link to my Goodreads is down below and the link to my new blog is also down below, allofthebooks.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.